Hello everybody, welcome to this presentation. Uh, this is a paper that was originally published at AAAI in the senior member track this year. And it is a position paper. I'm going to point out that certain things in planning languages uh, can be uh, disadvantageous. And I'm going to suggest that somebody else's languages, uh, particularly for model checking, can be more useful. Uh, obviously, this needs to be followed immediately with disclaimers. I do think planning languages can be useful. My quarrel is only with particular aspects. And also, while the coverage of the languages here is relatively broad, I cannot uh, and do not include everything that has been done in planning at any point in time. Okay, first, I don't have a history of advocating uh, planning languages really, so how come I am writing this paper? Before I get to answering these questions, as a reminder, well, I don't think I need to be reminded, PDDL, the competition language, this is the range of languages we cover. As you can see, it's pretty complete in terms of PDDL and derivatives and also some things that are not that closely related to PDDL, but it is not completely exhaustive, of course. Now, how come I didn't uh, write this paper? Well, first I wrote this proposal. It's a pretty big proposal and I didn't write it alone, but together with uh, 20 colleagues, essentially. Many, many projects. To bind all of this together, you need a use case. After long debates, the only thing or the thing we could all somewhat relate to were autonomous drones, which puts me into the position of having to model autonomous drones in PDDL. Now, of course, many people have uh, thought about that problem before me and have come up with solutions. But I had very particular requirements here. I, I have still. Uh, I need obstacle avoidance and collision safety to be part of the high level planning process. And that is, uh, this is something that in most of the approaches to robotics is just not being done. Collision avoidance is being deferred to lower level control layers. In the context of the proposal here, safety in high level planning is a big issue. And so uh, drones as a benchmark for me only makes sense if there is obstacle avoidance and collision safety in it. Which brings me to the following problem. First, uh, the space is uh, three-dimensional, as we all know. So even if it's a discrete space, you got n to the three places to model. How do you do this? Well, if I just fix the roadmap in, in the sky, then everything's fine, but that's pretty limited. Otherwise, if I model each 3D position by an object triple, the, the coding just explodes. This has been demonstrated in various contexts. I could do some numeric state variables for an arithmetic representation of space but I cannot use numbers as arguments to predicate. So I cannot then say that some coordinate X, Y, Z is currently being blocked or free. And one could also think of a model where we actually maintain the distance to all other objects at any point in time, but awkward really is a lower bound for what that model would look like. Second, even worse, uh, I want there to be exogenous drones controlled by third parties, not by myself, okay? So moving obstacles. How on earth could I model this in PDDL? Well, I spent an afternoon with uh, Alvaro Toralba while he was still in Saarbrücken throwing around really crazy modeling ideas. Uh, I then reached out to uh, Eves Karpas and Daniele Magazzini, who ended up being co-authors of this paper uh, because I thought maybe the robotics guys know how to do it. I spent the whole uh, afternoon with Jay Benson in a cafe talking about it. At the end of the day, the conclusion was the only thing in terms of obstacle avoidance that's feasible in PDDL is a roadmap graph with timed initial literals indicating busy times and places that should then be avoided so far as possible. Now, of course, uh, this is very dissatisfying, right? And uh, well, to the rescue, inside Joe Glassesman, uh, one of the colleagues who wrote this monster proposal with me, he is from model checking. He's involved in a language uh, called Jani. Now, uh, this talk here isn't really so much about Jani, and uh, I'm only advocating a very small fragment of Jani anyway. This talk is really about certain advantages of model checking languages in certain contexts. Fact number one, lo and behold, there is an array. If you want to specify in the discrete 3D world, in a finite discrete 3D world, which positions are free, then every one of us would just write an, a Boolean array into the code. Planning languages don't allow us to do that because for some reason that nobody can remember, we are specifying everything in logics. In model checking languages, the tradition is software uh, abstraction and so data structures are quite natural. And having simple data structures can be very useful also for planning purposes. Second, and this is really the main point of the talk, uh, models that uh, describe a large transition system in terms of automata networks. Systems of automata that uh, uh, execute concurrently and that can be synchronized by various means 
a supernatural model of agents acting in parallel in the same space. In the case of drones, you can very easily model an automaton that uh, is the drone they control, and then other automata that model other exogenous drones. And this is super natural and easy to write down. Uh, now for something completely different, question mark, and we're gonna just breeze through this. Student comes along, wants to work on the topic of riveting an aircraft where a robot works together collaboratively with a human. Again, you have two processes, two workflows that execute concurrently, and writing down an automata model is just super nice and natural. Writing it down in PDDL is very difficult. So what am I saying? Well, if uh, these are the features of planning problems you happen to be interested in, and of course this is only for some planning problems, not all. Okay, I'm only talking about planning problems of a particular kind. The exogenous agents, predefined plan structure, and simple data structures are important features that you want to be able to capture simply and naturally, then model checking languages, and in particular Jani, or a small fragment of Jani, Jani is a huge language, a small fragment of Jani, do the job just awesomely for you, whereas in planning languages, you're really hard pressed to find anything. These points where I say, okay, but in brackets, it really means there is hardly any support for what I'm looking for. On the side, I also like to mention that probabilistic duration uncertainty is very well developed in these languages. And for example, you could model the length of a human coworker's coffee break that way. However, I do not want to emphasize that point too much here because probabilistic duration uncertainty, of course, comes with inherent complexity. And this is not what I would like to be going on about. Because, of course, there's a question of the trade-off between expressivity and efficiency. Just because a language like Jani is able to model it all, it doesn't mean you can solve it all, given Jani. In particular, in general, it is, of course, true that AI has more of a focus on practical efficiency, whereas verification formal methods have a focus on just exhausting everything. And now, of course, there's a difference, and different languages might be suited. Uh, so uh, AI languages might have inherent advantages for, for example, the generation of search guns and so on and so forth. I believe in general this is true, but I also believe that uh, uh, specifically for what I'm advocating here, this is very much not true. All I'm advocating are concurrent automata and simple data structures. And I think I've been in heuristic search planning long enough to be absolutely confident that all our techniques could be defined for those things just fine. And as a matter of fact, we have done a lot of this for the lead relaxation in the past already when you are trying to use the delete relaxation for model checking. But you could actually use this, the exact same thing for planning in a model checking context. The two problems are equivalent at formal level, but when it comes to practice, uh, things are quite different. Anyway, I'm digressing. Uh, what am I suggesting? Well, uh, it is of course true, like if the left is the tower of Babel of planning and the right is the tower of Babel of model checking and those towers could be our modeling stacks modeling language stacks, then of course we have looked at each other's towers quite a bit. There's lots and lots of connections across the areas, also at the language level, that I can't even begin to describe in the time I have here. But I think what nobody has suggested yet and what I'm suggesting here is that, hey, we could actually take those other guys' languages and use it for planning. I mean, so far we had lots and lots of exchange of ideas how we could use uh, each other's algorithms for the other guy's purpose in their language. But, you know, model checking languages can be used for checking safety, but they can also be used for model-based control. And I think in particular situations, this is actually quite adequate and potentially more adequate than planning languages. So some of you might feel to jump up from their seats and cry yes, no, when they're reading those languages. I'm kind of hoping that you agree with me that actually the answer is uh, not necessarily yes. It might actually even be a fairly clear no. So what does that uh, I suggest to do? Well, first off, we should be open towards which modeling languages we're using. You know, we could use uh, model checking languages and whatnot for planning. I mean, it's possible and it might actually work better than something we do based on PDDL. I have learned only as in the review process for CAPS that apparently the model and solve competition in 2016 already did that. Uh, when I spoke to Jeremy, he suggested it to me. So either way, it's not my idea, but it's certainly something I consider very useful. In the midterm, if I solve planning problems model in Jani, of course, I'm gonna to have to use their tools, but I think in the long term, it would be much better to actually implement planning techniques in those tools and extend them to cover the things we don't cover yet, like arrays, for example. And as a final point, I think this could lead to a whole new connection between the two areas because 
compilations and idea exchange basically emphasize similarities. Whereas if we are in the same framework and we can uh, exp leverage the differences between the, the varying strengths of our techniques, then that would emphasize the cross era complementary nature, which of course also exists in the focus on practical efficiency and theoretical completeness. Okay, and that's all I wanted to say. Please uh, keep in mind that I'm not uh, bashing all the planning languages out there. Thanks. Uh, I'd be very happy to answer your questions.